Shalom, who wrote the book of Genesis, Aleph, and the book of Revelation, Tav, and what does these two books have in common? Nowhere in the Torah we read that the Lord spoke to Moses to write the book of Genesis, but when we read the Torah, we know the personal relationship that the Creator had with Moses. The Creator spoke to Moses face to face. The Creator called Moses by his personal name at Mount Sinai in front of all Israel, and Moses spent 40 years with Israel and the Creator speaking on a one-on-one -on -one basis, giving plenty of time to have the book of Genesis written. By the time Moses was at Mount Moab to give Israel the Oral Torah, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers was already been written, and those scrolls was entrusted by the high priest of the Levitical priesthood as commanded. So when Moses was giving the Oral Torah, Deuteronomy, there must have been hundreds of Levites acting as stenographers, diligently recording all the words that Moses says, so we got hundreds or even thousands of copies of the Torah for the Levitical priesthood. Traditionally, we're taught that Moses wrote most of the book of Deuteronomy and Joshua the son of Nun wrote the rest, but most likely for the past 40 years there have been plenty of Levites that worked as scribes, stenographers, and historians to diligently record all the words of Moses and the history of Israel. So when Moses was giving the Oral Torah, Deuteronomy, there must have been hundreds of Levites acting as stenographers, diligently recording all the words that Moses says, so we got hundreds or even thousands of copies of the Torah for the Levitical priesthood. The book of Genesis is the revelation Moses received from the Creator during the 40-year relationship the Creator had with Moses. So when you read the book of Genesis, you're not reading the word of Moses as if you're reading Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, or Deuteronomy. You're reading the words of the Creator, and Moses was his scribe. The book of Genesis, the beginning, better sheet, is narrated by the Creator. Who is best qualified to teach us the beginning? The one who created all of us, Yehovah, and Moses was his scribe. So who wrote the book of Revelation, Tav, and what does this book have in common with the book of Genesis? The answer is in the first verse of the book. This is the revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which the Creator gave Yeshua to show Yeshua's servants the events that must soon take place. And Yeshua authenticated by his angel, messenger in Hebrew, his servant John. And John wrote down all the things he had seen, all the things that were now, and all the things that was going to happen in the future, as commanded by Yeshua. We're going to focus on these words. This is a revelation of Yeshua Messiah, which the Creator gave Yeshua. The book of Revelation is a revelation Yeshua received from his Father, the Creator. And Yeshua gave this revelation of himself and the events that must take place to his servant, John, the scribe. The book of Revelation could also be taught as the fifth book of Yeshua, written by John. The first, Matthew, written by Matthew the Levite. Then you have Mark, Luke, John, and then we have the fifth book, Revelation, written by John through Yeshua from his father. These five Gospels is Yeshua's oral Torah, with the words of Moses, the prophets, the wisdom of Solomon, and the Psalms of David, and the history of Israel, all written to us for our learning. The beauty of the Bible is, the Creator's teaching us the beginning, better sheaf, Olive and the end, Revelation, Tav, declaring the end from the beginning, and Moses and John was the scribes. Two scribes, two books for truth. The book of Revelation was written to Yeshua's servants only, those that diligently obey him. It was not written to those religion leaders or believers that follow organized religion. Sadly, 99% of Messianics, Hebrew roots, and the Christian world doesn't diligently obey Moses or diligently obey Yeshua. They are very happy with their religion. If they were diligently obeying the words of Moses and diligently obeying the words of Yeshua, they will be teaching the book of Revelation. Sadly, if you go to their websites or their channels, you will not find a diligent teachings of the words of Moses or a diligent teaching of the words of Yeshua. That's why you will not find a diligent teaching of the book of Revelation. Sadly, this is a clear example of a wide path that most will go. If you're receiving this information, I have to warn you, Yeshua says, when more information is given to you, more is expected from you. Chapter 12 Be dressed for service and well prepared, as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. 
There will be special favor for those who are ready and waiting for his return. I tell you, he himself will seat them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever he comes, there will be special favor for his servants who are ready. Know this. A homeowner who knew exactly when a burglar was coming would not permit the house to be broken into. You must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Peter asked, Lord, is this illustration just for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, I'm talking to any faithful, sensible servant to whom the master gives the responsibility of managing his household and feeding his family. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I assure you the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But if the servant thinks, my master won't be back for a while, and begins oppressing the other servants, partying and getting drunk, well, the master will return unannounced and unexpected. He will tear the servant apart and banish him with the unfaithful. The servant will be severely punished, for though he knew his duty, he refused to do it. But people who are not aware that they are doing wrong will be punished only lightly. Much is required from those to whom much is given, and much more is required from those to whom much more is given. I have come to bring fire to the earth, and I wish that my task were already completed. There is a terrible baptism ahead of me, and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I have come to bring strife and division. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or the other way around. There will be a division between father and son, mother and daughter, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. The Creator holds as priests and kings to the highest standard of obedience and behavior to the Torah. Understand the weight of sin. If an average Israelite sins by lying, God will punish that Israelite for the sin. But if his priest or king sins that same lie, the priest and king will suffer more divine punishment than the average Israelite. It's great knowledge to know the divine titles of the Torah, the words of Moses, written 3,500 years ago at Mount Sinai, the written Torah, which is Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, the oral Torah of Moses, Deuteronomy, Genesis, the revelation the Creator gave Moses, and revelation the Creator gave His Son, Yeshua. But it's even greater knowledge to know the words written within and having wisdom and understanding of the Scriptures through the Holy Spirit from Genesis to Revelation. To those who has woken up through the Holy Spirit and now following the word and those who are new to Torah, I hope you guys like this episode of who wrote the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation and what does these two books have in common? I sure did. I'm Mike Molinar and this is Military Torah.